Now I would say that anatomy requires 80% of the time pure memorization and the rest 20% is maybe to a certain extent some sort of understanding and comprehension. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Arham and I'm a third year medical student at the University of Oslo in Norway. Now in this video, I want to talk to you guys about this one subject which arguably in the entire course of medicine requires the least amount of understanding and comprehension, maybe along with pharmacology. And yes, I'm talking about anatomy. Now I would say that anatomy requires 80% of the time pure memorization and the rest 20% is maybe to a certain extent some sort of understanding and comprehension. So anatomy is mostly your memorization skills and your ability to create this film in your mind where you can go through the entire human body or all the structures in the human body without anybody helping you out or without looking at a book or an atlas. Now at the University of Oslo we have our anatomy exam towards the end of our second year and this exam is probably one of the most feared exams um, in medicine here in Oslo. And there are several reasons for that. Firstly, it's like a 45 minute long viva, which means it's an oral examination with two examinators and also the worst part, an audience. Yeah, you heard me right. Anybody can come into the exam and watch your exam. I mean, anybody like medical students or uh, people associated with the medical faculty. So it's like a full blown pressure situation where you not only have to be at the top of your anatomy game, in order to achieve your desired results, but also um, stay super composed and put yourself together in order to handle the situation and deal with this immense um, pressure that this situation requires. Now, luckily I was able to perform extremely well in this exam and also started working as an assistant teacher in anatomy at the medical faculty at my university. Now, I'm not trying to be boastful guys. I don't want to talk big about myself. I don't want to come across as an arrogant twat. That's not the point. I only mention this as a proof that the techniques that I actually use in anatomy work pretty well and hence they are absolutely worthy of sharing with you guys. So in this video I want to take you guys with me through five techniques, five or six techniques which I used in order to be able to ace anatomy and all these techniques are actually based upon one single principle guys, active recall which I have previously talked about and this technique is according to evidence the most, one of the most rewarding strategies for studying. Firstly, I will talk about dissections and how they are the most important tool when it comes to learning anatomy. Secondly, I will talk about having colloquiums and group studies with your friends in order to make sure that whatever you learn sticks. Thirdly, I will talk about spider diagrams and how they also help immensely. Fourthly, I will talk to you guys about um, this whole idea of drawing anatomy on yourself <laughs> instead of a piece of paper. And lastly, I will talk about flashcards and how they are also super helpful. I firmly believe that being able to dissect a human body is one of the most humbling and amazing experiences that any human being can ever have. So us medical students should consider ourselves as extremely lucky to have this amazing opportunity to be able to dissect a human body and really have a look at what's inside of us. So when you have this opportunity guys, please, please make sure that you get the best out of it. Rule number one, always make sure that you show up prepared at the dissections because this is actually where you learn the most. You can sit at home for like multiple hours and try to learn anatomy or try to memorize all those different structures. But when you are down there at the dissection hall and really have a look at all these structures inside of us, that's when you memorize most of the material. So please always show up prepared at dissections or demonstrations for that matter. Because one major disadvantage if you do not show up prepared would be that you would be completely stressing out if you see other students who know everything and are uh, and are able to identify all the structures, then you would totally stress out and walk around confused. So do not be that person and please try to prepare yourselves before every dissection. And one more thing that I did was that I would, okay, firstly prepare myself before every dissection. And secondly, I would never take my notes with me to the dissection hall. And this would really force me to really active recall the information that I had memorized earlier and really test myself on that information when I am down there at the dissection hall. Instead of being able to just simply pull out my notes and have a look at the answers or have a look at all the names of those different structures. So in this way, I was not only able to learn new material, but also constantly test myself on that um, down there at the dissections, AKA active recall. 
Also, when making notes for anatomy, I would never ever ever use any textbooks because I think that was extremely time consuming and unnecessary. The only two things that I used were either flashcards or the atlas of anatomy. I never read any other textbooks like Gray's Anatomy or I don't know, other anatomy textbooks. And in this way, I also saved tons of time and maximized my efficiency when it came to learning anatomy. My friends and I had tons and tons of colloquiums down there at the dissection hall because we believed that this was the most efficient way of actually learning anatomy. We would take turns and act as the examinator and test each other on whatever we were revisiting. So let's say I was the examiner, then I would say, okay, well you, tell me where the brachial plexus comes from and tell me all those different nerves that derive from the brachial plexus, for example. So firstly, this was active recall and hence extremely efficient. And secondly, we were also constantly creating this exam situation where me and my friends had been there and tested ourselves constantly a lot of times. So that when the exam came, we were not really that stressed out because we had simulated the exact same situation multiple times. So we were really used to that. So yeah, we spent long hours down there at the dissection hall trying to learn material. And we, I think we started around two to three months before our exam started. And we would be the only ones, only ones down there. So yeah, this also helped a lot because we started early and towards the exam, the dissection hall would really start to get super crowded and everything would be taken. So yeah, begin early. Teamwork is everything. So whenever I was trying to memorize difficult concepts such as nerves and blood vessels, I would make these amazing spider diagrams. Because when you're trying to memorize these two things, you can easily lose track of what's going on because you have this one nerve which divides into two more and those two divide into two more and that keeps going on. So you have this massive giant huge tree of branches from one single nerve and it's really easy to get confused and lose the bigger picture. So to avoid confusion, I would make these amazing spider diagrams and then set them as the background on my laptop. And this would remind me every single time I open my laptop, that okay, Arham, you need to revise or actively recall whatever, let's say the brachial plexus. So I would sit down for two minutes and try and recall the entire brachial plexus and then quickly have a look at the spider diagram. And after doing that for like one week, Anything that I was trying to learn would really become a second nature, be it the brachial plexus or the sciatic nerve. Everything would be on my fingertips. So that's a major tip guys, draw spider diagrams and set them as your laptop background. Now I know this may sound a bit ridiculous and nasty, but I actually spent some time drawing the structures on my own skin as well with different highlighters. And I did this when I was specially trying to memorize innervations. Okay, that this part, let's say, is supplied by the median nerve. And then I would color this entire part on my own skin with yellow. And let's say I was talking about the radial nerve and which area does that supply. Then I would mark this entire area in red or the other nerve, for example, for that matter. So yeah, I think being able to visually see what's going on really made a huge difference, guys. Lastly, guys, please get yourself a deck of anatomy flashcards. I think that is one of the best investments that you can make when trying to learn or memorize anatomy. Doing flashcards take little effort, is time-saving, is efficient, and it is based on active recall, which is the most rewarding thing or rewarding strategy for studying. And there is another app called Complete Anatomy 3D, which is absolutely worthy of investment because you can see the entire human body from a 3D perspective and um, really look into every single structure that you want to learn. So even though I personally did not invest in that, I think it is absolutely worthy of it and you should consider investing in Complete Anatomy 3D. So those are all the tricks and methods that I used to Ace Anatomy and I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions then kindly send me an email or contact me on my socials. If you haven't subscribed already then please consider doing so. Take care guys, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.